Come on. On this episode. Yeah, come on. Chris yeah, and Jet share an extraordinary bond. They spend 24-7 together and they just emotionally can't bear to be without each other. But it's about to be put to the ultimate test. I'm worried about this. I can feel multiple lumps. Oh, wow. Audrey and Alison embark on an emotional rescue mission. It's really sad to see all the damage. To help animals traumatised by an unprecedented flood disaster. See this patchy hair yeah. loss everywhere. Yeah. not normally like that. Hello, look how sad you are. Yeah. Tail between his legs, yeah. that's unusual for him. Kate's alarmed at the dramatic change in Doberman Ben. There's something wrong with you, Ben. He stinks and his temperature's really high. Are you sweet? And will Danny be able to win over shy little Edgar? You poor little duff, aren't you, Ben? You make my world a better place. Come on, there's your girls. In the UK, Scott's heading out of London to the English coast for an appointment with a very special patient. Today I'm making a bit of an impromptu home visit of sorts to meet a friend of mine and his kindred spirit, his dog Jet. Hello you two. Ah, oh, Scott. Hi Chris. Hi. Hi mate. Good. And you, good to see you. Hi, how are you? <laughs> and you. Look, uh, as much as I'm here for you guys, where's Jet? Where's the dog? <gasps> Hi, baby. Hi. Oh, uh, she knows it's you. How are you? Former paratrooper Chris is walking the UK shoreline to raise money for the armed forces charity, SAFA. Well, man, you're looking so healthy. I mean, this walk, you know, it would kill most people, but for you, you've just come from strength to strength. Ah. Surrounded by two good women, what else do I need to do? Well, fair enough, that's true, that's true, that's true. <laughs> Four years ago, Chris was struggling and knew he needed to make a change in his life. So the walking started, essentially, I, I hadn't been in the best place. Um, I was really suffering with a bit of anxiety and depression and always searching for, for something to do to be happy. But so, you know, I made a really kind of spare of the minute decision. But I'm just going to go and walk the coastline of the United Kingdom. Yeah, there's no doubts in my mind that all my family members, friends, thought I was completely crazy. I literally set off with £10 two days worth of rations about two days after deciding I was going to do it. <laughs> Jack, come on. Jack, come on. Nine months into his journey, Chris's life began to change when he rescued nine-year-old Jet. Meeting Jet was a huge turning point in my walk. It's all of a sudden, that focus shifting onto to someone else and having somebody else to care for was a, an absolute game changer. Jack, come on. Jack. For my mental health, that was massive. What she'd done was just gave me somebody that I knew completely and utterly was devoted and loved me and gave me the space when I needed it to figure things out for myself. Come on. She made me smile every day. I wasn't like that before. Can you grab your side then? No, no, the other, the other one. That's it. Got it? Yeah. 18 months later, Chris and Jet were joined by fellow adventurer Kate. I think I first fell in love with the bond, you know, that Chris and Jet have because it's just so unique, so remarkable in the way that they are never apart. They spend 24-7 together and they just emotionally can't bear to be without each other. Where's it down? The change that's come over Chris as a result of having the relationship with this dog is truly transformative. His joy is back, his self-confidence is back, and he's learnt to love again. But Chris's newfound family bliss could be in jeopardy, as the couple have recently found a worrying lump on Jet's chest. Scott very kindly offered if you have anything wrong with Jet before, then um, just, just let me know. It, you know, as soon as we found out, we told him, and just like that man of his word, you know, he comes straight to us. Now, Chris, you mentioned that she had a, a lump on her memory tissue, so sorry, sweetheart, I'm just gonna have a little bit of a feel of your breast tissue. Yeah, 
I'm worried about this. Um, actually, I can feel multiple lumps. Yeah, yeah. Oh my word. Mm. That must be quite new because yeah, we we've really, really checked. Probably means that they're developing quite quickly. Yeah. Unfortunately, uh, I would probably prepare yourself. It's probably going to be some kind of cancer, I'm afraid. When there's multiple lumps, you'd have to start worrying about the possibility of cancer. Yeah. Pretty frightening, I know. Yeah. Oh, she's in there, isn't it? Yeah. It's, um... Sorry. It's okay. Jet. She is everything to him. He loves this dog, and straight away I see that his heart's broken. Unfortunately, there is a real dark cloud that's lingering over this family right now. I'm so glad you were here. I know. Back together again, doing another emergency. Yeah. 600 kilometres north of Sydney, Audrey and Alison are heading off to help in an area of Australia hit hard by recent flooding. Ever since we've heard about the devastating floods here in northern New South Wales, Audrey and I have been desperate to come out and provide some veterinary care and services. So many people have lost their houses, their friends, their family, their animals, their livestock. It's absolutely devastating to see. Oh, wow. It's really sad to see all the damage. We don't exactly know what's in store for us today. I mean, we've never dealt with flood victims before. Bushfires we have. Two years ago, the twins also volunteered their time and expertise, treating native wildlife injured during Australia's disastrous bushfires. Now they've come to the small town of Korokai to help animals hurt or diseased when the region was laid waste by flood water three weeks ago. So we're just setting up the triage van at Korokai and they've got a really great setup. You can do minor surgery here. Yeah. In an emergency situation, you might have 35 animals per day in the field. The sisters will be working with Vets for Compassion, whose founder, Elaine, has come to the rescue of animals in natural disasters all over the world. Most of the towns devastated. They've lost everything. They've lost their homes or their pets or their farms. A few people have said that they've watched helplessly as their animals floated away. They just couldn't hold them. Who have we got here? This is Bess. Yep. Um, she's 10 years old and she's been suffering from a skin condition from all the mud. It does look very red and itchy. Yeah. Yeah, and it was just muddy water, you think? That... Oh, I think so, yeah. yeah. Audrey and Alison's first patient is Bessie, whose owner Nicole is concerned because the American staffy is losing large chunks of fur. Yeah, so you can see there's patchy hair yeah. marks everywhere. Yeah, not normally like that, so... Good around the shoulders, around the neck, down here, it's pretty bad as well. Even yeah. though the flood waters have subsided and the ground is starting to dry up, there's still areas that are very damp. It's brought in a lot of debris and mud and bacteria to people's homes, and we're worried about these dogs in the backyard and all of this bacteria. And I suspect she's just been lying on the muddy ground the yeah, whole time. Yeah, that one time. Yeah. yeah. That's not good, buddy. All right, let's have a listen to you. As the twins begin a closer examination, Nicole tells them Bessie was lucky to survive the rising floodwaters when many animals were swept away. When our street filled up with water, it came in my front yard and then it just kept getting higher and higher. So, Unfortunately, we lost our business across the river. Oh, well, hopefully we get this skin condition yes. sorted, so it's one less thing to worry about. Yes. Jed, you feeling up okay, mate? 
In Melbourne, it's a special day for Danny, as today she's working at the Cat Protection Society. Oh, hi, my sweet girl. Look at you. And she loves seeing familiar faces like Buffy. You're looking so much better, aren't you, hey? You've put on some weight. Looking fit as a fiddle, hey? I think you're going to be ready for your forever home now. It's so nice being back at the Cat Protection Society, seeing some of the patients I've been working with and seeing them more on the mend. It's really nice. Oh, you are, I know. <laughs> Buffy is looking fantastic. It's so nice to see her doing well. I'm so excited for her future. You darling. Buffy has been given a clean bill of health and is ready for adoption. Oh, hi, Lisa. How are you going? Good, thanks, Danny. But now shelter manager Lisa has a very special new arrival who desperately needs Danny's help. I do have yes. a special needs boy that oh, I would really? love you to have a look at. His name's Edgar. Oh, Edgar. And Let's he's go gorgeous. Edgar. Let's go. So Edgar was brought in by a member of the public and came from a colony of cats from a factory area that this gentleman had been feeding very kindly. But of course, it was getting beyond control. Are you sweet? Brave little Edgar was in a shocking state when he arrived at the shelter. Hi, darling boy. But it's his eye that now needs the most urgent attention. It just hasn't healed properly, even on antibiotics. So we really need to have it assessed to see where we go in the future with that. So it's not going to be a problem for Edgar. All right, mate, let's have a little look at that eye, darling. Oh, gosh, sweetheart, out. Yeah, not great, is that? That is a very diseased eye. Edgar has had such a rough time. He's been on the streets, he's malnourished, he's been, he's had infections that have been causing him itch, discomfort, pain with his ringworm and his eye since probably he was born without any treatment. The poor thing, I, just, I wouldn't wish that upon any animal ever. Oh gosh, yeah. Mm. So would this be causing him pain? The fact that he is squinting, he's got that blepharospasm, okay. that absolutely implies there's pain. Oh mate, that is just awful, you poor thing. As the massive cleanup continues in the flood ravaged New South Wales town of Korokai, the flood waters brought a lot of who knows what into the area. Yep. Audrey and Allison are treating a skin infection on 10 year old Bessie, one of the many animals suffering after the flood waters have receded. It may be mosquito bites that she's reacting to, or it may be whatever is in the flood water and mud that she's lying on. So Bessie has a skin allergy exacerbated with all the floods and the dirt that's lying around. That creates an itchy environment that she starts scratching and chewing at, introducing bacteria into the skin, what we call a pyoderma. All right, great. So I'm going to get us an antihistamine shot. I'm going to give you some antibiotics as well. I'll see if we have any steroids as well. Just a short course. At the height of the floods, owner Nicole was forced to make the difficult decision to leave Bessie behind. Hoping she would be safe, when the family was evacuated from their home. You're a good girl. There was too many dogs out here. It was just like dogs. And we're not good with dogs. Yeah, so yeah, yeah, I had to just leave her in the back in all the mud and stuff. So it was, yeah, not ideal, but safer for her. <laughs> yeah. While Bessie survived the floodwaters, sadly, one of Nicole's other pets wasn't so lucky. We had a little Jack Russell puppy, but she got washed away in the flood. Oh, did she? Yeah, yep. She was only four months old. Oh, and you had little Coco. Oh, I'm sorry. So, and that was hard on all of us. Nicole has told us that they've never found Coco again. This is a really tragic story, and it's caused a huge heartbreak in the family. For not just the humans and the kids, but also Bessie she did love her so and it's just hard to not even know how they're feeling even tell them what happened to their best mate so 
While everybody is concentrating on all the human grief, it's easy to forget that dogs grieve too. It's people like Nicole and her family that really need vets with compassion to help them with their beloved animals, so it can just take away some of the pain. She's part of the family. She means a lot, so I hate seeing her just in discomfort. This is the antibiotic, um, yep. so it's one tablet twice a day. Yep. That cream, just put it on twice a day on the really sore spots. Yep. So the bits that are looking a bit red, yep. or if she's got any bits that are looking irritable, it's just to kind of get on top of the allergy and stop the inflammation. Yep. And then the antibiotic will do the rest. Yep. Yep. All right, there awesome. you go. Thank you so much. Being here, hearing their stories, it just means the world to both of us. It's really highlighted the human-animal bond, because helping an animal is actually helping a human. I think we've made a difference. It really is special. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> oh gosh, yeah. Oh mate, that is just awful, you poor thing. At Melbourne's Cat Protection Society, Danny and shelter manager Lisa need to find out if Edgar has any vision in his painful left eye. So he's got the third eyelid right over the mm. cornea there, but what I can see, the cornea looks just really irregular and scarred. All right, mate, so we're just going to check essentially that there's no vision in that eye, so we're just going to do a minute response test. Yep. So the fact that he is just not responding to that menace test, it just confirms that there's no vision in that eye. But unfortunately, a painful eye that I believe would have no vision, there's really only one treatment option for that, and that's going to be to remove that eye. Mm. Thank you so much. Well, whatever's best for Edgar. The surgery to remove an eye, it's not something I want to go and do, but the one thing that gives me comfort is that I know Edgar's going to feel so much better with it gone. I'll leave him with you. All right, we'll I'll come and check on him later. Okay, my darling. You come with me, sweetie pie. Here we go, bye -bye. <laughs> if Edgar doesn't have surgery, his diseased eye will become increasingly painful and he'll have little chance of finding a new home. Good boy the special ones like Edgar that we just need to go that extra mile for and get into that home that you know we know he deserves and to the life that he should have as a cat just lazing around and sleeping 16 to 18 hours a day. The first step of this procedure is essentially just to suture the eyelids closed, keeps everything confined into that area and it also gives us a point of leverage to navigate the rest of the surgery. The surgery is extremely risky. This is definitely the tricky bit. The vital optic nerves cross over between both eyes and the slightest damage could mean Edgar risking losing his sight completely. It would be absolutely devastating if I were to damage the vision of the one eye that will be remaining from this surgery. That would be just horrendous. We've made good progress through the tissues. Every year around 2,000 strays and abandoned cats just like Edgar are treated at the shelter. Yeah, I'm scared I'm getting into the globe. It's hoped with the right veterinary care and loads of TLC, Every one of them can find a loving new home. All right, so we've just released all the tissues from behind the eye, cut through the optic nerve. I'm just removing that eye now. The delicate surgery is complete, but Danny is anxious for what the future holds for little Edgar. Overall, I'm really happy with how the surgery's gone. I think everything's been fairly uncomplicated, which is great. So it's just a matter of seeing how he recovers and making sure there's not been any damage to the vision of that other eye. Ed will now have a big sleep, followed by plenty of extra TLC. What I'm feeling here is you know, multiple lumps along the sort of lymphatic chain of her breast tissue, and it's in multiple locations. So I think we need to address it really quickly. In Essex, Scott is delivering devastating news to charity walker Chris and his pregnant partner Kate, 
that their constant companion jet has a life-threatening illness. Oh, God. You always hope that it's not as bad as you suspect. Like we were hoping for a best case scenario, not a worst. Giving Kate and Chris the news that I can feel multiple lumps in their beloved dog Jet is, is heartbreaking. This dog is the centre of their universe. And I think we have to be really brave. And I know you're a really brave guy and you've done a lot of amazing stuff. And I know you've done it with this dog and I know how much she means to you. So I think we can't really delay. After four and a half years on the trail, Chris and Jet's heroic charity walk around the UK coast could be over. Naturally petrified, yeah. You know, of course I am. Um, yeah, I've already had a couple of tears and stuff like this. I love that girl and obviously she's priority. We stopped the walk there and then. The quicker we can get these types of tumours out, the better chance we have. There's some cases where, yes, they've already spread. Oh, don't look like that, Jet, honestly. I know, it's like, look, it's like, like she's, she's, she's heard awful, look, she's heard me. <laughs> like with any cases of potential cancer, you need to act quickly. You need to respond to the lump by investigating it thoroughly and if possible, removing it as soon as you can. <laughs> so tomorrow it is then? Yeah, tomorrow. Yeah, so have a good night's rest. Tomorrow, surgery. Together we can make this happen, all right? Yeah, you guys are all right. You're all good. All good. We'll, yeah, we'll get through. You. You're, You're welcome. She brings so much love and joy. Yeah, we couldn't imagine, you know, doing this walk without her. She's a big part of our hearts. Hello, look how sad you are. How did she get so sad? At Kate's Bondi Vet Hospital, Simon has rushed in with his unusually subdued Doberman, Ben. Tail between his legs, that's unusual for him. Yeah, it's so unusual. Benny is one of Kate's regular patients. Today she's alarmed at the dramatic change in the young dog. Let's go this way. Come on, Benny. Ben hurt his leg, so he's been walking funny, and he seems like he's just very out of it, where he's usually really quite happy. He comes here a lot. But he just walked in really quiet and sombre, so there's definitely something not right. Okay, so let's start at the beginning. Yesterday, we were playing in the garage, and he had a fall, like he fell, I heard him yell. He hobbled a bit, So it off, right back? Like, yeah, he held, held it up. Held it up, yeah. Yep. And then he walked it off, and I was like, oh, okay, he's fine. And then my housemate called today and said, oh, he's not moving. And then he started shivering, so I was like, okay. And I've never seen him with his tail like that. No, and you've seen him a few times, like he always has so much energy. Kate's baffled when she hears Benny's symptoms. It's unlikely a leg injury would cause such a dramatic change in behaviour. This is not like him at all, is it? Benny. In Isleworth, Chris and Kate have brought in nine-year-old Jet for emergency surgery after Scott diagnosed probable breast cancer. I haven't really slept properly for the last two nights. I even had a bit of a panic attack on the way down in the car. For more than four years, Jet and Chris have been inseparable during a challenging charity walk around the UK coastline. Hi guys. Hey, Scott. How are you? Hey, you guys nice. all right? Yeah, nice to see you again. And you, and you. Hi, Jet. Oh dear, I'm trying to think who looks more nervous, you or Dad? <laughs> <laughs> He's yeah. fine, look, totally oblivious. Yeah, hi oh, baby. So, it's a big thing we're doing and I know it means that I'll have to separate you guys from your girl for a little while, but do you yes. actually will get to come down and be with her until she falls asleep? Yeah, thank you. Which I think she'll be appreciative of too. 
It's not normal procedure for us to have owners in the clinical space. It can just be an upsetting process, but in the case of Chris and Jet, this is a relationship that's forged over four and a half years. They are so close. I thought it's best that we get Chris by our side. It's okay, buddy. It's okay. okay Where's Daddy? Where's Daddy? That's a good girl. Oh, you're so good. Oh, Jetty, we'll see you on the other side, mate. Night, Jetty. You dream of lots of treats. What we want to see, is it? We'll take very good care of it, don't worry. All right, we're leaving to it. Okay. Yeah, thank you so much. You're welcome. See, you're going to just give us a call. Give you a call. Oh well. Yeah. Thank All right. You. Take it easy. Bye, guys. How much does that guy love this dog? I know. The nature of our relationship together. We're just together all the time. So even just not being with her for this is going to be horrid. Jen, can you just hold that for me, there, please? Uh, Twenty-seven point three. Just moments into the procedure, Scott makes an alarming discovery. She has the slowest heartbeat. I think I've ever heard. Come on. There you go. Yeah. In Melbourne, it's been two months since Edgar had surgery to remove his eye, and the future looks bright for the brave little cat now affectionately known as Gar, after being adopted into a loving new home. Gar is an absolutely gorgeous little cat. It doesn't matter if he's got one eye, two eyes, no eyes. But he's just absolutely gorgeous. And he's got such a lovely personality. He's so sweet. Oh, what was that? Nina and her son Andrew have an immediate connection with the lively rescue cat. We felt a little bit of kinship with him because our son's legally blind. And we thought, well, we can definitely deal with a cat who's got a vision problem. There's absolutely no problems with that. Good boy. One of the reasons we adopted Gar was because I've grown up with a vision impairment my whole life. We have a bit of an understanding of sight impairment, what that involves, what that includes, and therefore how to kind of approach it. Gar's favorite toy, he loves his bottle caps. He's got other toys but the bottle cap always, because he can play with it by himself. Yeah, he's just a good cat. He's just, that's all he is. He's a good, loving, friendly cat. Gar has become a new friend for the family. Jen, can you just hold that for me there, please? She has the slowest heartbeat. I think I've ever heard. In Isleworth, Scott has detected an abnormally low heart rate in nine-year-old Jet. Should we reverse some of the dormitory? No. It's so low because she's an athlete. She's just so fit to keep that in, in mind, not worry. Do you need help? Nah, it's all right. I'm all good. With Scott reassured Jet's heartbeat is normal, he now needs to check that the cancer hasn't spread into any other parts of her chest. X-ray. When we consider removing a cancerous growth, we want to make sure that the horse hasn't already bolted. And in this case, one of the first places that a tumour will spread to is the lungs. And everything is looking OK, so we can now move forward to surgery. It's a relief to see that Jet's chest is clear. It doesn't mean that she's out of the woods yet, though. So you can see very clearly the mass that Chris could feel here, but actually, rather than it being one mass, it's a series of smaller masses. They're even going down in here. I can feel them underneath my fingers, and then this whole section here, so it's a decent amount of tissue that I'll have to remove. There's lots of things that I see here that I don't like the look of.
Yesterday, we were playing in the garage and he fell, I heard him yell. He hobbled a bit and then he walked it off and I was like, oh, okay, he's fine. And then he started shivering, so I was like, okay. And I've never seen him with his tail like that. In Bondi, Kate is trying to piece together what's happened to Simon's Doberman Benny and find out why the young dog is so lethargic. A nurse has come in to assist so Kate can carry out a full examination. Let's just pull him slightly this way so I can get behind him. Okay, let's just start at the beginning. Just having a look at how he places his feet. Okay, so this is left back. We've got a movable knee there. Maybe he's going to crush it. Blind Freddy can see that there's something wrong with Ben's leg. His right hind leg, he's really lame on it. He doesn't say much, does he? But Kate's not convinced a possible leg injury is the cause of Benny's extreme drowsiness. I think trying to fall asleep. Just going on here. Every single patient that comes through the door, I go nose to tail, and that means I look at every single small detail, despite what the owner tells me. It is so easy to miss something in veterinary medicine if you don't be thorough. So Ben has papillomavirus. That is not the reason for him being lethargic today and why he's here. But we've seen you before about your papillomas, haven't we? Stinks. You smell something that stinks? Yes, there's something infected around here. Yeah. Do you smell that? Well, I wasn't sure if that was his mouth. There's something wrong with you, Ben. As Kate continues her examination, the list of worrying symptoms continues to grow. Boiling. Mm -hmm. 40.1. Why are you so hot, mate? 40.2. He's too hot. Things are just not making sense. He's got a temperature. His temperature is at 40.3, which is ridiculously high. He's mentally dull. You see him tremoring, like he's shaking. He seems like he doesn't really know what's going on and all he wants to do is sleep. There is something going on with Ben that is not related to his leg. No possibility that he would have had any drugs, right? No. Is there anything that you can think of that he could have gotten? Oh, uh, not at home. He, but would he be the type that eats something off the ground? Yes, yeah. And I try to watch it so much, like I don't even, like I'm on him all the time. I'm going to run a drug test anyway. We need to be thorough, we need to be systematic and try and figure out what's going on. Good boy. To me, he looks like he's tripping. Yeah, he's not going home. So first thing, let's take some blood, start getting them run, because I want to figure out what's going on. It's, he stinks and his temperature is really high. Yeah, it's weird. So, I know, sweetheart. Come on, let's get going. To rule out any form of drug poisoning, Kate is carrying out urgent blood and urine tests. So far we've got negative for cocaine, amphetamine negative, benzodiazepine negative, positive for THC. He's got cannabis toxicity. Benny. So if you guys want to give her a bit of a, a kiss. In the UK, charity walker Chris and partner Kate have said a heartbreaking goodbye to their beloved dog, Jet. Take it easy. Bye, guys. How much does that guy love this dog? I know. There's lots of things that I see here that I don't like the look of. And Scott is now halfway through marathon surgery to remove a series of worrying lumps from the much-loved dog's breast. It's going to be a little bit tricky because it's quite big. There's multiple lumps. What we like to do in the case of malignant tumours is to give what's called a margin which means that if there has been some spread of cancerous cells, you can pick them up by removing a certain amount of tissue from either side of the lump. The challenge here is that some of these lumps go all the way down, so I won't be able to remove enough to be confident that I've got all the margins. The surgery is massive. The incision line is huge. Everything about it is on a grand scale. There's a lot of potentially cancerous tissue on Jet that I'm trying desperately to remove. 
all the masses, um, which is great, um, in one clean piece. And I can see the tumors now. They're quite dark in color, and there's many of them. But they're all gone, I've checked. There's nothing else there, so now it's all about closing up. It doesn't mean that she's out of the woods, but everything that I thought was something to be concerned about, I've taken away. So hopefully I've taken away some concern from Jet and Chris. Scott's been able to remove more dangerous tissue than he originally thought possible. Hey. What a good girl. But owner Chris and partner Kate will be on edge until tests confirm whether or not the lumps are cancerous. While I'm performing the surgery, I'm very worried about Chris as well and about the fact that he may not recover from the fact that Jet might not recover. They have such a close bond. It's quite a worry. Hey, Gary, we're gonna come home soon. What a relief to know that it went well. Yeah. <laughs> so, so grateful, honestly, can't tell you. That was the longest three hours <laughs> of my life, that was. <laughs> was it? <laughs> we literally just stayed outside the whole time. We just sat outside the surgery for, for the yeah, whole Yeah, just sat in the car, just in case. <laughs> it's all right, darling. Doctor's orders, I'm afraid your epic journey is on hold as we focus on Jet's recovery. Unfortunately, I am going to have to put a stop on their epic journey. Jet needs to recover from this major operation and I think Kate needs a bit of a break as well. She is seven months pregnant after all. Enjoy 10 days off. Yeah. Give all your love and attention to her. Now she's on the road to recovery and we just need to wait for the results, so fingers crossed. He looks like he's positive for cannabis, or THC. So that explains quite a lot, right? It explains our temperature, explains why he's shivering, why he's so sleepy. In Bondi, Kate has finally discovered why Doberman Benny is so lethargic. He's tested positive for cannabis, a drug that's much more toxic in dogs than in humans. Even a small amount can cause dramatic fluctuations in blood pressure and heart rate. So what I'm going to do with him is I'm going to get him started on some IV fluids ASAP. Sure. I'm going to keep him for a little while. Okay. Can you walk, buddy? He seems to be like getting slightly worse. Come on, do you want to get up? Okay, we're going to take you through to bed. With Ben super relaxed and sleepy from the cannabis, Kate wants to further investigate the possibility he may also have a leg injury. He's just lying down like this. Good oh boy. Out. So there's some inflammation in that joint. So this is all swollen around here, this little leg. I also don't love that situation. The images will be sent off to an orthopaedic surgeon for further investigation. Hi. This is Ben. He ate cannabis. Ben will need to stay under close observation at the vet hospital until the cannabis wears off. You're a good Doberman. Yes, you are. You're a good baby Doberman. So how's the patient? Yeah, she's been amazing. Hi, gorgeous girl. How is the wound looking now? Is it kind of looking like it's healing? Yeah, 100%. It's been 12 days since Scott's patient, Jet, underwent massive surgery for extensive lump removal. Great. Yeah, really good. Now it's time for Scott to give Chris and Kate the all-important test results they've been nervously waiting for. This stage, it looks like all the tumour is out. The news is that it has come back as a malignant type of tumour. The positive thing is that by removing all the tissue that I did, and healthy tissue surrounds all of the areas where we found cancerous cells. Amazing. So that's, that's good news. It's really good news. Oh, Absolutely. Oh, that's amazing news. <laughs> oh my gosh, I can't oh, tell you how amazing it's been. Virtual man, Virtual man. Virtual man, definitely. I know. 
My advice to Chris and Kate is that given a few days and the staples be removed, Jet should be able to return to her journey traipsing around the UK coastline. She needs to go back to what she loves. It gives her an amazing quality of life. I'm glad to get your canine companion back on the road. Thank you, and we look forward to seeing you at the finish line, Scott. Oh, I'll be there. Bells on. Look after Please yourself. Take care, Scott. Yeah. Thank you. Take care. Bye. Bye, guys. A week after Kate diagnosed cannabis poisoning in Doberman Benny, the young dog has made a full recovery. And in more good news, his limp has improved and his x-rays have come back all clear for joint problems.